Let's look at how ABM handles kits and components. Sometimes in retail, when you're selling items, you need to be able to sell them individually. The first item, second and third, as individual items all with separate prices. But then you may want to bundle those together or put them as a kit and sell them as a single item with a different price. Let's see how that's handled within the ABM software program. So here we are in ABM and if I have a look at those products I've got the, uh, the full finished product. There we go with the sales price uh, listed there and we've got our items one, two and three and of course all with their individual prices listed. At the moment I've got no stock of these items and we're going to see how the system handles the sale of these individually. So if I am then to uh, create the components of my finished product, I need to put them into the system. So I have the individual items there, but I need to load them in as components. So we go into the finished product, I simply go to my components area, and I click on insert new components. Then I'm simply going to look for that particular item that we just uh, put together and I've dropped it in there. Now you can have different quantities, so perhaps the kits that you're assembling have two or three or multiple quantities of a particular item. For this example, I'm just going to put in one of each. So it has one of those, one of these, and one of these ones. Now these items I've got for my demonstration don't have a cost associated to them, but you'd see that reflect here, and when we go and do a purchase, we'll see how that reflects. So now I have the uh, bundled retail price of those three components together, uh, kitted together to give us um, the total, and then we've dictated the price that it's actually selling for. So let's have, see how this works in a sales environment. Customers on the phone and would like to place an order, I'll simply go straight to an invoice, they may have walked in from a counter sale, pick up our product, find the particular one we're looking for, and it drops it in at that 495 retail pricing. What's interesting is as we save that, so let's say that invoice has been done. There we go. Let's now go and have a look at our inventory file. So when we sold that particular product, and I'll just refresh here, we've got no stock of the computer kit because we sold that, but if I look at the individual items, they've dropped into negative. So I've actually been able to sell a finished product by assembling the items on the fly. And you'll see that the little warnings popped up that that stock is now required, etc. Uh, so if I'd had them on the shelf, but I hadn't had the computer kit assembled, I would have been able to do that uh, together as well. Let's now see what happens when we actually go and buy these products and the price that reflects in our computer kit. So I'm going to uh, simply go to our suppliers, pick anybody here, and bring in some stock of those items. So we'll bring in 10 of each, and this time we're going to give it a cost. So now let's go and have a look at our products again. When I look at the uh, individual components, we'll see now that I've got nine on the shelf, because remembering we dropped into negative, and I'll be able to see the cost of those in my purchasing area, so I'll be able to see what, they, what the last cost they came in. And when I look at my uh, fully assembled kit, and I go to my components, the costs have automatically updated. So any time that the price changes on the components of a kit, it automatically changes and updates the, um, uh, the cost associated with assembling those. You can also add in non-cost or non-stock items such as labour. So for example, if you're putting kits of components together and there is a labour factor with that, you simply create a, a product called labour. You're going to point it to a particular group and we cover that in another video, and the group will point to uh, specific ledger accounts that are labour specific, and it's going to be a non-stock controlled product. And that way what you end up with is a, uh, an item that has a cost associated to it but isn't a stocked item that you can then put into your kits and builds. 
So that's ABM, and that's how we handle kits and components. Um, we also have the advanced manufacturing, which goes to multi-level bills of materials and makes it easy to do a complicated assembly.